Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today which is a follow up on my earlier uh, explorations looking at clothoid transitions or clothoid approximations to make a transition between a line and an arc with a uh, linear rate of change of curvature. So, uh, what I've done is I've put together a clothoid generator in uh, Grasshopper. So, the actual clothoid grasshopper definition that I had that that would plot the points um, and then you approximate a curve through it uh, with that what it does is it is it has two well apart from the angle setting so you set an angle it also has an input for the uh, transition length and then the radius of arc segment so what it does is it actually moves this arc around Depending on the corner and the length of the segment here, so it doesn't actually the arc it doesn't actually touch tangentially to the to the uh, extended linear sides of the corner. So so I've sort of flipped it around. So there's some some dimensions that you can use to uh, multipliers that you can use to reproduce these corners uh, along with the approximated clothoid transition, which in this case is handled with a a, a degree five spline with six CVs with equidistant uh, points between equal distance between the, the CVs um, and the first one to three points will be collinear because they are going G2 to a line and the arc here there's a G2 connection here to the arc if you want to hear the bit more background on the clothoid transition um, approximate transition then oh well Put a link in the description because it's better to watch my earlier videos on this this is just really going to talk about this little definition in grasshopper so you can change the angle because uh, if you change the angle then these ratios change so say you wanted a, a 120 degree angle with making a clothoid transition between there i've set it up so that uh, there's a constant relationship between the angle of the corner and the actual angle of the arc segment that's left in the middle um, because to have control over this as well means I'd need a whole lot more information so what I've done is I've gone through and sampled uh, the actual the clothoid um, definition that plots points um, I've sampled that at 60, 75, 90 degrees 105, 120, 135, 150, and 165. And with the information down here, I've I've created some um so I've, I've I've measured these dimensions and the ratios, and then I've created uh, some graphs in here with some interpolated uh, curves, and then I sample basically that um, that resulting graph um, to get the uh you know if i'm between some of the sample points there so it's just it's measuring off my graph there and and using those uh ratios to drive the position of the arc uh here and this point here um and then i've got a a blend a couple of blend curves here g2 on each end and got a bulge ratio it happens to be 0.5 which is perfect so those are all basically equidistant cvs so I have been using my uh, clothoid sort of set up a bit for a few client jobs in SolidWorks where they want nice corners and I don't want to, where they want to have a corner that looks like it is a true radius in the middle sort of thing. I keep dashing into Rhino and then have to open up my old clothoid definition and it's a bit of a pain so this is much easier now. I can just open this up, I can go okay what's the corner angle I want. Um, 130 degrees and then what's the target corner radius and when I'm talking about the target corner radius this is talking about the the radius that you use for the corner so as you can see here the blue line that circle is touching both of the uh, side lines of the corner so out to the theoretical junction there virtual sharp so the blue line is touching that what the radius i'm setting is this one here which is the actual arc segment okay and then the other thing i've got control over is the angle um so my definition is figuring out the other things which are um the setback of the radius 
So this this radius you're putting in here, imagine if you drew this blue circle and it's uh, tangent to this line and this line, that gives you your centre, then you draw another arc in here. That arc is centre, sort of, um, its line of symmetry is halfway between the side lines, if that makes sense. And then that radius is this number here which you're inputting, and then the other important dimension is this one here, which is the start of this line, so the setback. So that will change depending on the angle. Okay, um, so I've made it so you can go for a pretty flat um, out to a 165 degrees, um, and I've, I've set it up by having this constant relationship with the arc um, segment to the actual corner angle that sort of it's it's not exactly thirds but it's a sort of nice even split there between spline and arc and going the other way if you go if you crank the corner all the way over to 60 degrees what this gives you is if you want to make a pill shape so imagine if you've got a pill coming around here the forms coming around following the green line and this arc that's ending on the apex of your pill shape so if you wanted to make a pill with this um you just mirror over this arc segment so you'd have the arc going right around uh, 60 degrees 120 degrees of arc on the end and then you have this um spline transition here so because these are equidistant um points you can replicate this in solidworks and the sketcher easily enough so this is a the apple watch button that i measured off and and uh, modelled in one of the earlier videos um, so this solution here would give you that sort of result if we put this back to 90 degrees I do have as you can see here I've got corner radius of this sort of wacky number here so if we just plug that in and over here I have a I have the So that orange line there, that's from the, the Apple accessory PDF, that's the corner of the, uh, the iPhone 12. So you can see that actually finishes like just off where my clothoid um, finishes. So it's pretty close and I've got some deviations here. So that's a polyline, so if I show you where the points are. So you can see all those points and they're the red ones. Those are the points of the polyline, and then I've run a deviation from them to the clothoid, and you can see in the middle here, you know, 0 0.006. Um, they're a bit looser over here, but um, generally pretty close. Um, so, yeah, I'm not making any assumptions or, or saying this is how anybody makes their corners. This is the probably the actually last time I want to visit this because I've spent way too long on this um, stuff anyway so I'll stick this definition in on Google Drive like I do with all my other files and if anybody's interested if you want to use this you can use it there's the dimension output here so this group here is basically just for for painting these dimensions on the screen in Grasshopper um it's all internalized there's no external data needed so you there's no rhino file that associates this this will just be the cloth of creator um and if you want to bake it out you can just center click on this guy here and go bake and that will bake out the the um the arc and the two splines Just like that okay um i'm gonna wrap this up short and sweet hopefully the last time i make a video on clothoids hope you find this useful andrew jackson aj design studio see ya